So uh, as promised, I thought I'd give you guys a quick uh, demo for uh, DAC Assistant Job 4. So if we open up our our uh, front panel here, take a look. Put in my program level comments. job is actually to to create an RPM gauge um, for the motor that you have on your trainer there. Um, the interesting thing about that motor that you have on your trainer, it has a, an optical encoder on the, uh, the back side of it there. And what we're going to do with that optical encoder is we're going to feed that into the uh, DAC assistant on the USB 6008 and we will get a uh, edge count. Um, so it will be a digital input, but it will be a counter input. Uh, PFI zero, and it will be a, an edge count uh, counter zero. I think is what the what the address on it is, but you'll have to use the DAC assistant to set that up. Now, I currently don't have a uh, uh, a trainer hooked up right now, so I'm going to simulate some of this. Um, so first and foremost, is you'll you'll definitely need a gauge. So under numeric, we can grab a gauge. Uh, good idea to make this a nice big gauge so that you can see the face of it and perhaps change the uh, the title of it to RPM gauge. Okay, And then uh, the other thing we probably will want is a stop button here. So uh, under Boolean, I'm going to put a stop button just for stopping the VI if I ever need to. Okay, um, So there we go. And then the other thing too is what I'll tell you from the from the what we know about that uh, that motor is that we typically are running that thing up um, near 3400 3500 rpms so I'm going to change the, the scale of my gauge by going into the properties and just changing this to let's say 4000 just so we end up with a, a nice 0 to 4000 gauge that we can look at okay everything we've created on the front panel obviously resides on the on the block diagram now too so we can see our two uh, icons that we created there. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a while loop. Um, when you go to actually use that counter input, it'll ask you. It'll say, would you would you like to put a while loop? Uh, typically, these are installed in a while loop. Um, yeah, you know, obviously, you can answer yes or you can do it manually either way. Um, really, now, really, what you got to think about, and and here's the way I did it for the simulation tonight, is I created a little uh, a little sub vi that I call count. So where normally this would be your DAC assistant, I'm just going to get some pulses coming out of this count. Now you don't know what they are. Uh, perhaps I don't know what they are, just like we don't know what the 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 motor, what the RPMs are, the motor that is going to be spinning at based upon the voltage applied to it. So, so in this case, whatever is coming out of count is what I want to look at, and that's what I want to read. Um, the easy way to think about this, though, is is, is like this. Think about it like, I want to take the count, and I want to take a count over a period of time. So if I take uh, a count for, for one second, um, and I read uh, 100 of these, then I would what I would need to do is multiply that by 60 to get the, the revolutions per minute. But, but you got to be careful on that, too, because the count is actually each pulse off the encoder wheel. So in, in our case, the encoder wheel actually has um, 500 pulses per revolution. So I'd have to take the number of revolutions divided by 500. Uh, so let's say it was, let's say uh, every second I was getting 500 revolutions. Um, I would take 500 revolutions or 500 counts divided by 500 counts per revolution to find out I'm only getting one revolution per second um, or whatever that, that magic number is. What I'll tell you is um, to get better real-time response. You really want to have a, a shorter wait time between loops and a shorter wait time uh, for counts. So what I'm going to do is up in the top left here, I'm going to create a timing signal called wait millisecond. And I'm going to start out just creating this with a, uh, a constant of let's say 250 milliseconds. So what that means is I'm taking a count 
um, from 0 to 250 milliseconds. I'm getting a count over that span. And then from 251 to 500, then from 501 to 750, and then from 751 to 1000. So every 250 milliseconds I'm getting a new chunk of counts. Okay, And we'll have to take that into account really to, to make up for that. To go to revolutions per minute, I would have to divide by 500 which is the number of counts per revolution. And then I would also have to multiply by 4 to get revolutions per second, and then by 60 to get revolutions per minute. Um, the easiest way to do that is just to right-click, go into Structures, and create a formula node. And basically, your count coming in, I'm going to bring that coming in as an input, and I'm just going to call it new, like it's my new count coming in. Okay, right now I started with zero uh, pulses. Um, 250 milliseconds later, I've got some number of pulses. Okay, um, and then coming out, I'm going to actually start to type some code here. Actually, I'm going to say change equals new minus last. The idea here is I'm going to get my new count, my last count. I'm going to subtract the two and determine the change in between the new count and the previous count. All right, so that's kind of a, a unique way of doing things. Um, we've defined the variable new as a as a numeric here. We have not defined the variables change or last. So I'm going to right click and add. Uh, I'm going to add a uh, an output for change. Okay, and I'm going to add an output. Um, for uh, for last, okay, and then now's where I need to do some some uh, some basics around what we're doing here. So I'm also going to add an output for what I call RPM. You'll notice I do everything in lowercase, so there's no chance of me uh, making a, a se semantic error uh, by having a you know my formula node have something with caps and my my actual variable having uh, all lowercase letters. Um, so what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to say RPM equals change divided by 500. So that's really going to give me. Um, if I get a thousand counts in that time, that's equal to two revolutions because it's 500 pulses per revolution on the encoder wheel that you're working with. Um, if I had 5,000, it'd be 100, you know, revolutions per the quarter second because this is really our sample rate right here, a quarter second. Okay. Um, but now what I need to do is I need to take into account that I'm not getting revolutions per minute, and I'm I'm not even getting revolutions per second. I'm only getting. Uh, revolutions per quarter second. So to turn that into revolutions per second, I would multiply by 4. And to turn that into revolutions per minute, I would multiply by 60. And now I'm going to get revolutions per minute. And then what I need to do is set last equal to new. So you'll notice I do that at the end. So all of my calculations are based on what I had. Last equals new. But at the end, then whatever the new count was coming in, that becomes my last count. And then 250 millisecond wait and go back and look at new again. So last and new are always going to differ by the count that's occur the counts that occur over that 250 millisecond gap. So now if I take my RPM gauge and bring him in here, and I take my stop BI and bring him down here, now I have a way to get in and out of my, my loop. I'm going to hit Control U, the most dangerous keys. Uh, that cleans up pretty nice, and I can actually make it even smaller if I do something like that. You'll notice how simple this chunk of code really, really is right now. So if I hit Run, we're actually reading 3400 RPMs. And just to give you an example of what's going on, so we can see it a little better, if I if I probe in here. What you'll see is um, I'm getting some huge number for this. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me, but it is counting up. You can see it counting up here, 24, 25, 26, whatever the number is. Um, I use kind of a funky way to, to create that, uh, that little uh, digital. But basically, that digital coming in is a count. And I'm looking at that change in the count since the last iteration. 
you'll notice when I first turn it on, I get a spike. And the reason why that is, is because when I first turn it on, my initial value that was stored in last was zero. So initially that count is huge, but it really doesn't matter what the count is because it's going to take a quarter second to balance itself out. The neat thing about this, the way to test this now once you have it working, um, you should be able to actually grab onto the motor shaft. Not hard, but just put a little bit of pressure on that motor shaft and you should actually see your, your gauge float up or down. And that, and that should work out pretty well for you. So hopefully, I'll, I'll get this posted up on YouTube here tonight, and, and hopefully you guys can take a look at this and make sense of it. The thing to remember on this for DAC4 is that this count is not count like what I have. Um, that count for you guys is going to be the DAC assistant, the counter input. It's a digital input, it's a counter input PFI0. That is what you're going to be looking at and what you're going to be reading. So this will be a DAC assistant coming in as your new count, not what I have here. So I'll sign off and best of luck.